This is the Solid Signal podcast for the week of August 16th, 2021. So the idea for this week's podcast comes from a different sort of podcast. I I watch this one on YouTube a lot, and it's called Adam Savage's Tested. And I recommend it to you if you're a fan of the show Mythbusters like I have been for the last, oh, you know, 18 years or so. Uh, Because it's the guy from Mythbusters, and what he does is he takes questions about what the show was all about and how things worked, and he just talks honestly about how things went, and sometimes good and sometimes bad. And I find it really entertaining. And I got around to thinking I'd never really done something like that, where I, I pulled the curtain back and talked a little bit about how things work in the uh, the. YouTube and Solid Signal blog arena that I tend to manage a lot. And so this ended up being a really good time to do that because I just released a new video on installing WeBoost's Office 200 cell booster for business. And and the thing is that it's, the video hasn't really taken off yet. It's just still, you know, got only a, a handful of views. But I wanted to get it out there before somebody else did one. I wanted to be the first one because it's, you know, first of all, Google's going to prioritize that a little bit more um, and it's going to keep that being popular. And the goal is to help people learn how to install this booster ahead of time so that it's not so intimidating. Uh, The booster itself is kind of a neat one for a 15,000 square foot area. You can install it yourself and it does a great job of making sure that you get great cell service. But I don't want to go too far into the selling, I want to talk to you about the behind the scenes because this was, in many ways, the hardest video that I've ever done. Um, I'm not necessarily super proud of the way that it came out, but I will say that the way it came out is as good as it could possibly be. And, and I'll take you a little bit behind the scenes of it so that you kind of understand where I'm coming from. So this cell booster is designed for a space up to 15,000 square feet, like I said. And so what I wanted to do was an installation video in a business that could really benefit from it. And and there are tons of businesses like this. And, And I thought, okay, well, I'll give them a free cell booster. I have the budget to do it. I'll do all the installation myself. And then we can see, you know, real world, this is what it did in this room. And this is what it did in that room. And it took a long time. And I had lined up an organization close to our Southern California Operations Center that was going to let us do this. So I had the production team all ready, and I had all the tools, and I got the booster, and well, you know, (laughs) it's 2021, and the world doesn't always work the way that you expect, and you know, there's some privacy stuff that I can't really get into, but in the end, uh, just as we are ready to get this all started, it turns out that, you know, I kind of lost the location, and it's you know, I thought, okay, well, maybe I can scout for a new one. And it took about three weeks to get everybody to agree to do everything and do all the preliminary testing on the location that I had. And it, I decided I didn't really have enough time because I really wanted to get this video out. I wanted to be the first one to have it out there. And so what was I going to do? Um, I, you know, that I found that the West Coast Operations Center was not really a good candidate for it for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, I wanted to show how this thing went into a suspended ceiling. I don't have a suspended ceiling. I needed a a location with 15,000 square feet. I don't have 15,000 square feet. I needed something where I could do some roof access. And I really, yeah, I can get up on the roof and stuff like that. But, you know, a a lot of commercial buildings uh, have specialized access that comes from the roof, um, whether, you know, it's just some some way to automatically route the cables and keep them safe. By the way, I found out those things are called weatherheads, and I didn't know that. I thought a weatherhead was somebody who was, you know, kind of interested in weather, but not the point. Anyway, so what to do? Because I have this incredibly powerful booster, and I have this desire to get out a video for it, and I know how much it's going to take to do that video and how much time it's going to do. And I have the production staff lined up and, and I've got no place to put it. So what do I do? Well, I decided to do my first ever fake installation video. And I'm really upfront at the beginning about how um, 
no, I'm not actually putting this in a commercial location. And I, I don't try to include instrumented testing because it was not possible for me to do that. But I decided that I was going to do all of the work within the operations center and, and actually within the little studio, which also serves as my office, which I, is where I am right now and where I recorded a lot of these videos. And then showing everything that I possibly can show how it goes together with a combination of, you know, animations and clip art and whatever. So I did this and it took honestly about the same amount of time as if I had done it for real. Um, I had to try to find something that the hardest thing was actually trying to find something that would act as an analog for a ceiling tile. I thought about going out and buying a ceiling tile and turns out you really can't just buy one. You got to buy a whole bunch of them and I needed, you know, one on top of which ceiling tiles are made of gypsum board, which are, is really, really, you know, crummy and dusty when you, when you work on it. I knew that I had a space for it in the, in the location that I was going to do this video, but I don't really have a great location to, to make a ton of dust in the West Coast Operations Center. And I looked for the materials that I had lying around and it turns out that what I had um, was a piece of high density foam that worked out pretty much the same way. And, and that part of it ended up working out pretty well. It did actually work out. Um, and, and I was able to do that in a very convincing way. And it doesn't look like a ceiling tile, but everybody knows what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. And I get to talk about how it's easier to take the ceiling tile out if you possibly can, which ended up working out really well too. So it took about two, two and a half days uh, to get all the footage that I wanted to get, all the photos, and then, all, you know, put together all the stock photos that I wanted and, and get ready for editing. And, and I was still feeling pretty good about it. And that's when I realized that the microphone I had been using to record a lot of these things. You can see it on usually on my polo shirt when I'm on camera. Well, just kind of crapped out. I mean, it started getting all crackly and then eventually just kind of died. And so, you know, trying to figure out what was going on, um, you know, if it was the recording device or whatever, and I figured out it ended up being a loose wire that I was able to kind of salvage. And I recorded a whole bunch of stuff over again so that I could uh, have a fairly decent video. The one thing that I couldn't end up recording over was the part where I was outside mounting the outdoor antenna and you get some rumbling from the, the airflow um, because I'm using a backup microphone at that point. The camera itself has a backup microphone and you know I've used it before when really needed to and so it doesn't have really a windscreen and so it was able to get enough of the audio that it still kind of worked and I didn't have to reshoot because I really didn't have time to do it. But it was turning out to be an incredibly, incredibly difficult shoot. I thought that the one that I had done for the HD 8200 was a really tough shoot. And that's, that's a subject for another podcast. But this ended up being the roughest one that, that I've ever done for solid signal. And still, I mean, I, I guess I, I can be kind of proud of the fact that it came out and that it ends up being a pretty good install guide. It doesn't stop me from wanting to do another one. And when there's time and budget to bring everybody together and when I can find another location, I'll probably do a proper installation video because I want to show you, you know, me walking up on the on the roof instead of the guy from Wilson whose, you know, video I, I stole and with their, you know, implicit permission. But I want to show you me walking up on the roof and me doing the thing with the with the antenna and stringing it through real conduits and stuff like that, because I think that's going to be a better video. But in the meantime, I've got something It's still the only video on the subject out there on YouTube, and I'm hoping that it's going to begin to take off pretty soon. And now you know the inside story of it, and you'll probably go watch this video and and say, oh, yeah, well, OK, I can kind of see the behind the scenes stuff now. And that was kind of the idea. And, and as I said, it, it all came from Adam Savage's Tested. You should really check out that channel if you're bored with mine. But in the meantime, if you're not, I hope you like and subscribe and enjoy and tell me what you want to see with future videos because I always try to listen. Um, I really appreciate all of you who are subscribed and who are listening and I, I try to do the content that you ask me to do. That's it for me for this week and I will be talking to you again real soon.